All right. Hello and welcome back to Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. We can take a look and see where we're at puzzle point wise. Uh, so I think these are called the IQ point. I think it's Indiana quotient points, something like that. Um, so I don't expect the total to go up um, during this playthrough. I don't think, maybe slightly, depending on how things play out. Um, but currently, we have 64 IQ points. Basically, the way it works, I think that there are a 1,000 total points that you can get in the game. Um, and you get a certain amount for just you know, completing it, but the rest of it is for the various pathways and the variable puzzles that you can potentially come across. Um, because there are puzzles that will change just uh, randomly um, in each playthrough. And this is one of them. And we're about to find out what the solution is. So let's first look at this bookcase that fell down when uh, Indy was, uh, you know, during our introduction there. I believe it's part of the old spray collection. Oh, there we go. That is what we are looking for. Um, so there's actually, I think, two different ways to solve this particular one. Um, so what we're going to do is... It's an old lecture hall desk, complete with a wad of gum, I'll bet. I want to pick up that gum. It sure is gooey. <laughs> it sure is gooey. Um, all right, so... What we're going to do is we're going to head down here. Um, you could go up that rope there, uh, but instead what we're going to do is come down here and use this gum to give us some traction to climb the coal chute, which is gross. I think I'll stick this on my shoes for traction. What do you know? The gum works. Not 100% certain that that makes any sense, but uh, then we're going to look at these cats. It's much too heavy to carry. I believe it's part of the old Ashkenazi collection. Oh, wait. <laughs> this is not something we have to look at. What am I doing? Um, let's look at this pile of books. I believe it's part of the old Sprague collection. This, I think, is actually the one we want, though. It's a book ready to fall. I don't think that'll work. Um, all right. Let's see. I can't remember. Because I usually don't end up doing it this way. And we just... I can't reach it. Can't reach it. <laughs> Walk to inside a bookshelf. Um, I mean, we could just... Yeah, maybe we'll just do the other solution. Um, just, I just can't remember how it is that we get up to that book. Um, so we're going to head up. Actually, while we're down here, there's a dusty rag or dirty rag. We're going to grab that. Oops. Not use. Pick up. And we will head up here. Walk to stairs. Yes. Very good. Good job, Indy. All right, we're going to climb up this rope. And there's an arrowhead hiding around somewhere. Walk to arrowhead. All right, let's pick up this arrowhead. Pick up arrowhead. All right. And there we go. Climb back down. Use the dirty rag, the arrowhead. All right, and now we're going to use them both to undo these screws on the back of the bookcase. It's unscrewed. And annoyingly enough, we have to do it five times, but. It's unscrewed. Well, we will survive. It's unscrewed. It's unscrewed. 
feel like they probably could have just allowed this to happen, but... It's unscrewed. All right, so let's pick up bookcase, or at least the back of it. I can't pick that up. Oh, maybe we just open. There we go. There it is, the lost dialogue of Plato. Whoa! <laughs> um, all right. Very good. We've done it. And down here, I'm going to go back to see Sophia. Cross the way. And we will read through the lost dialogue. Probably have to open it, don't we? All righty. Hello, Sophia. I got it. I found Plato's lost dialogue. Really? Our jungle friend Sternhardt is quite the scholar. Let me see. Um, yes, and unfortunately, I think I actually have to read this myself. So, the Hermocrates. Now, at last, I have Plato's lost dialogue translated entirely. The Greek original is lost, so I've used the Arabic text I found in an Italian monastery years ago and always thought was a hoax. Now, I wonder, could this remarkable book hold the secret to long-lost Atlantis? Probably not. No one will publish it, that's certain. The fear of ridicule is too great. To be safe, I've sent a copy to Sprague. Charles Sternhardt, London, 1922. All right, so a good chunk of this won't really make sense just yet, um, and we're going to keep coming back to it, but I think we're going to read through now just to get a general idea of what we have coming up. Uh, so, Hermocrates. In shame, I hereby do recant the time and place whereof Critias, Critias? Probably Critias. Critias spoke. In rendering Egyptian into Greek, he made a tenfold error. Instead of lying 3,000 miles hence, Atlantis may well have been 30,000 miles away, or perhaps it was less than 300 miles from our own shores. That is a rather wide difference. Likewise, it may be that the Lost Kingdom held sway as many as 100,000 years ago, or as few as 1,000. Socrates, if a kingdom arose on earth beyond anywhere men might travel, then we will never hear of it. We ought to accept the lesser figure. All right, fair enough. So, glorious Atlantis founded two colonies, the lesser 180 miles north of the great, uh, north of the city, and the greater 550 miles to the south. Gates of the kingdom opened only with the aid of special stones. At many outposts, a sunstone sufficed, if darkness concealed the tall horns. At the greater colony, a moonstone uh, was also needed, with the noon sun riding above the full moon. To approach Atlantis itself, a world stone was required. Ah, the world stone. Second mention of that. With darkness ruling the old city without challenge. Final entrance yielded only to contrary minds. And it is said that dwellers in Atlantis had no horses nor any need of them. Orichalcum, the metal that glittered like fire. This they had instead. They cast it into shiny beads and used them as we do minted coins, paying statues to do their work as if by magic. When their colonies were failing, wise men carved strange devices out of amber to search for the metal, but only proud Atlantis ever yielded a supply. Socrates, you have called the kingdom wealthy, but surely this is absurd. And our final page that we'll be reading... As the waters rose around their city, the kings of Atlantis, one after another, sought to hold off fate. Knowing mortal men would never rule the sea, they planned a huge colossus, which, by use of orichalcum, ten beads at a time, would make them like the gods themselves. Nurab Sal, hey, it's our good buddy Nurab Sal, was one such king. He, it was... Uh, he it was, say the wise men of Egypt, who first put men in the Colossus, making many freaks of nature at times when the celestial spheres were well aligned. Socrates, this I doubt. We are hearing a child's tale. I don't see how this will help us find Atlantis. 
isn't it obvious? Didn't she know Plato's tenfold numbering error? Plato mentioned colleagues, not post. We'll find them. Um, let's go with this. Didn't you notice Plato's tenfold numbering error? So he got his dates mixed up. Why is that so important? Plato's error means distances could also be wrong. He may not find a last name like all. Maybe the colony names will turn up. Plato's error means distances could also be wrong. So what if they are? If Plato is right, Atlantis is in the Mediterranean. You mean 300 miles from Greece instead of 3,000? Yes, the cradle of civilization. Yes, the cradle of civilization. You could be right. He once told me he came from the middle of the world. That's what Mediterranean means. Good old Nerobe Sal. Um, yeah, sure, it looks be nice. Good old Nerobe Sal. I'm starting to like him. Wait, quiet. I think I'm getting something. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be too nice. Don't push this too far, Sophia. Will you just shut up and listen to me? Among the artifacts that Kerner stole was a small stone disc with a hole in it. I'm sure it was one of the three stones mentioned in Plato's book. And I didn't find it. I bought it from Omar al-Jabbar in Algiers. Why should he help us? Or was it Alain Plotier in Monte Carlo? <laughs> Either way, Algiers or Monte Carlo. This much I do know. You'll need all three stones if you want to find Atlantis. All right, I'm ready to go. How do I find... Yeah, let's... Mm, sure. How will I find Trottier and Al Jabbar? Not so fast. First, I'm going to tell your fortune. Look into my eyes. <laughs> Deep into my eyes. So this tells us which path we'll follow. I'm not going to hurt you. Now hold still. You are a remarkable man, Dr. Jones. You possess great strength of character. You are resourceful, always eager to solve life's deepest puzzles. I could never follow the thoughts of your maze-like mind. So I can't follow you along the twisting path that leads to Atlantis. Hmm. Um, all right, so... Yeah, I... Um... We'll click on this one, which will say that we want to go together. I'd rather tackle this together with you. Are you absolutely sure? Yes. Yes, I'm sure. We should team up. Okay, if that's how you feel, we'll <clears throat> go together. It's okay. I'll be running the show. Let's get going. We can still catch tonight's clipper. Um, yeah, let's go with that. Let's get going. We can still catch tonight's clipper. You make it sound so romantic. <laughs> All right. And then we will take off very shortly. Right here, in fact, we will end the video. And when we come back, we're going to uh, see if we can find one of these stones and learn a little bit more about the... Uh, um, location of some of these Atlantean colonies. But till then, see ya.